pleasure to be here just for us. We're big fans. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very kind. Well, hello, everybody. It's Saturday night. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Relax. <laughs> hey, did you hear about Justin Bieber? He has had his pet monkey confiscated. <laughs> he travelled into Germany. He had his pet monkey on it. Of course he's got a pet monkey. <laughs> He travelled in Germany with it on his private jet. When officials went onto the jet, they saw it. It was crazy, jabbering incessantly, throwing his own poo around. They said, there's no way he should have a pet monkey. <laughs> Somebody just went, what? <laughs> hey, I like Justin Bieber. I want them to give him his monkey back. He needs a role model, OK? <laughs> Has anyone been following the grumpy cat on the internet? If you don't know what I'm talking about, here he is. He's a sensation. There's the grumpy cat. <laughs> That's his actual face. That's his actual face. OK? <laughs> <laughs> He's not always that grumpy. Here he is in a better mood. Okay? <laughs> Looks like Jack D, doesn't he? <laughs> in the words of Anton Deck, let's get ready to grumble. Oh, but anyway, it was the Grumpy Cat's birthday this week, and he's been celebrating, and I'm sure that cheered him up. So here he is, celebrating his birthday. <laughs> I love the Grumpy Cat. <laughs> All day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see who else is on the show tonight. We have a fabulous lineup for you. We have the very glamorous, the very beautiful French movie star Audrey Totou is here, right there. <laughs> Alongside her, the reigning IBF super middleweight champion Carl Fox. <laughs> and Titan of the acting world, Sir Ben Kingsley, right there. <laughs> Good evening, all. How are you all for refreshments in the green room? You have everything you need? Excellent. Because I was thinking of offering you a special drink this week. Uh, we have two that we've been sent in. And the first one uh, is this one, and it's called Sex Tea. OK? It's an actual drink I was sent in. And you think, OK. I have one. I have one already. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and on the back, it tells what it is. It says it's for weak sexual activity, impotence... Well, no, I don't. You're suffering from premature punchlines. That's what you're suffering. <laughs> it says it's for weak sexual activity, impotence, and early ejaculation. I thought, why would you drink that? Who wants those things? <laughs> but of course, it's to boost performance. It goes on to say, the tea nourishes your kidneys, produces vigor, and strengthens your yang. <laughs> so, I was all set to drink my sex tea when we found out that another drink had come into the office, and this one is uh, even more exciting. Here it is. It's a genuine drink. It's a coffee. But it's no ordinary coffee. It's called Death Wish Coffee, and it claims to be the world's strongest coffee. It contains 660 milligrams of caffeine, which is 200% more than you'd find in a normal cup of coffee. OK? So you've got to be careful with it. We've given you some in the green room to try. I'm going to just try the smallest sip. OK, that's enough. So just have a small sip on. Mm. It's delicious. <laughs> it's caffeine-tastic. But you've got to treat it with respect, so I'm hoping that in there you're taking it easy. No, don't, 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 don't gog it. <laughs> it tastes good? Yeah, good. I like a strong coffee. I don't feel too good. <laughs> well, let's... I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's uh, not having an adverse effect. You sure you're feeling OK? <laughs> That was me on decaf. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think we better get Sir Ben out so we can get some of that coffee out of his system. He is, of course, acting world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm filled he's here. It's Sir Ben Kingsley. <laughs> You look, you look fabulous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Uh, you <laughs> this isn't just the coffee. You, you must work out. You keep yourself in shape. I, I, I do. I like to, when I'm at home, I like to uh, swim. Uh -huh. One of my 
uh, treats to myself is a little pool at home. Wow, lovely. And uh, I do a little bit of weights. Do you? I hear uh, someone told me you walk around naked at home all the time. Is this correct? Who told you that? Your postman. <laughs> no, it's it's a post-woman. <laughs> so it was a man. No, no. So this is this is what I heard. This is a rumor going around about you. This is some, this is some vegan nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we should point out. Sir Ben can use that accent. I can because of your legacy. Will. No, but I'll do other accents too. <laughs> that's not a legacy, is it? I'll do others. Well, you can do right? as much as you want. But if you do one from another country, often people think that that's being. Oh, that's Yorkshire. Yeah. That's another country. Because I was born in Scarbury, see. But you live down here now, I guess, do you? You're London based now? Uh, no, I live in Oxfordshire. Oh, good lord. <laughs> There's no way you're from Oxfordshire. Yes, they are. Because people they from Oxfordshire <laughs> don't whoop their own <laughs> they town, do. right? They, don't, they know how to live. Do wow, they? yeah. Is it a crazy place? Crazy place yeah. where I live, yeah. What's a big night out in Oxfordshire? I uh, know. Oh, last night was amazing because. We had a power outage, which is very unusual. Say no more. That sounds incredible. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, well, yeah. Amazing. That was a high spot of the evening, and I decided because I, you know, I lit the candles, lit the fire, and uh, sipping a, uh, a whiskey. And and Darren, my gardener, who's probably watching, ca came around for a whiskey, and he looked. He really looked quite ashen. I said, well, Darren, what is it? What is it? And he'd spent two weeks with his seedlings in the greenhouse. Is this a, a sexual use? No, 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 let me finish. <laughs> it gets better and it gets heroic. He, he, all these wonderful little seedlings in a power outage, the electric fan heater goes off in a greenhouse, they die. In this That's weather? weeks and weeks of work, they die. So, I drag myself away from my whiskey, my fire and my candles. I'm with Darren at midnight, lugging this great big gas heater to put it into his greenhouse and lighting it, but we saved... To the seedlings. Save some seedlings. <laughs> save the seedlings. Can I just say, are you and Darren partners? Are you, is this like a civil <laughs> partnership? Or Not a civil partnership. No. We work together. Just friends. He, he, he does the fine work and, and he allows me to do the bonfire and the hacking and the, you know, the, the heavy, the, so the he boring the, stuff. He does the creative the, stuff. Uh, so you obviously enjoy, A, uh, gardening, B, I love gardening, I love life. cooking. And you, and you cook naked? Is that why this is what I I do not. Where does this come from? <laughs> well, uh, you, uh, someone told me this and I thought it makes... Someone. Well, it makes sense. No, it because... doesn't make any sense <laughs> at all. But Just because, because I did a film wearing a large nappy, there's no need to <laughs> nag me about This is it. not a Gandhi hangover. Okay, let's talk about Gandhi. Let's Why? talk about Gandhi. Because, well, because he I seems like a very nice man. And he you was. brought it up. What an incredible performance. I, I hope... I hope that the younger people watching have seen this. I know all of the uh, older people will have seen it. What a remarkable performance. And a, a kind of a career-changing one for you, it's I It's shown in schools, so thank goodness all the young people do know about the They, they about will have the seen it. Yeah. Uh, and you yeah. were actually, despite, you know, the way you look there, you were a young man when you got that role. You were, well, you were under 40, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, 36, 37. Wow. And yeah. there was some controversy about you getting the part initially, wasn't there? I don't know any, about any controversy. <laughs> <laughs> there were questions in Parliament. I'm getting a bit uncomfortable now. I'll be honest, <laughs> with, you. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Here's the reason well, why. I'm, I'm, but Sir Ben was okay to play this part because it wasn't because your 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 birth name is Krishna Banji. This oh, that's right. Name. But that, that is a really strange name because Krishna is a Hindu name and Banji is a Muslim name. So that it actually, it, as a name in the Indian Indian subcontinent, Very doesn't unusual. exist. It doesn't exist. And your father. So your father was the Indian side. My the father was the Indian side, and my mother was the half Russian Jewish side. Wow. So I have Russian Jewish, a bit of English. And uh, Gujarati, Ishmaili Koja. And do you uh, do you speak any Gujarati? That was Gujarati. I was just talking. That's <laughs> Gujarati. <laughs> if I do it quick enough, it's convincing. <laughs> and I move my head from side to side. <laughs> <laughs> There's the fan base right now. Um, do you do you take much of the personality away with you? I mean, when you finish. Gandhi, what did you what did you have of Gandhi left in you when you'd finished that adventure? We there are about? there are roles that do stick to the inside of your rib cage. They're, they're, they become part of you, or they awaken a part of you that's dormant. Even if it's a violent role, 
like Sexy Beast. It awoke in me a part that I didn't realize was there. There is that rage in, in all of us. Yeah. And you, you tap into it and you, there he is! Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you tap into aspects of yourself, which is an extraordinary adventure. Whether or not they stay with you, I don't know. I think they're already there, you wake them up. Whenever I spend some time with you, whenever I'm near you, I, I always notice, and I'm always struck by your use of language. You obviously love language. You obviously um, adore using it, and you seem to like the structure of it. Uh, I was at a Pride of Britain award with um, Sir Ben a couple of years back, and you made a speech on stage which was eloquent and lovely, and, and it, was, it was memorable, although I have forgotten it. But at the time, it was... <laughs> I remember thinking, wow, I wish I could remember that speech, because it was such a wonderful speech, and I'm assuming you wrote that yourself. Uh, this is something you, you had before you acted, or you, it's grown out of your love of words from your, your roles? I think that... The, the role of an actor, if this doesn't sound too pompous, has given me a place to stand in, from which I can be heard. Because, um, frankly, as a child, I was pretty well ignored by my parents. Uh, it was a very strange household, and one had to desperately audition for one's love. It was a struggle to be seen and heard. And maybe that suppressed... Uh, scream or language or whatever was released when I when I became an actor. I'm far more articulate through other characters. And there's a kind of, but there's a beauty in language, even kind of like, you know, rougher language or kind of crude language. Like when you play Don Logan, we're talking about mm. sexy beast, of course, it, the way he speaks, there's a kind of a poetry in that even, isn't there? Well, that script was beautiful because it read like, it read like Shakespeare. It was, it was dramatic poetry at its best. The rhythms of that language were unaltered by Ray and I. I can remember that there were a block of 13 no's followed by a block of eight no's. I can still remember that. No, 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 no. I can, I can remember the blocks of no's and how beautifully they were laid out on the page. And I never deviated from that script. It was a perfectly written When you first screenplay. saw that, did you think maybe the printer was broken? Or you knew I that was... I, 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 I just, I read it saying, there you are. That was my reaction. Yeah. There you are. Wonderful. It's a fabulous movie and just such a powerful experience. This is Sexy Beast. Do it. I'm very tired. Do it. This is madness. I've had enough of this crime and punishment bollocks. I'm happy here. I won't let you be happy. Why should I? Friday, the Grosvenor, you'll be there. I won't. You will, I told Ted you're doing it. Don't you show me up. No, I won't be there. You will, you missed the round tree. No, Don. Yes, round tree. No. Yes, Grosvenor. No, Don. Friday. I won't be there. You will. No, Don. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. <laughs> what a performance. What a part to get, though. You know, you must know when you have a part of that, you must know that there's a chance there that you're going to create something special. It was a beautifully written part, yeah. Um, do you ever, are you uh, at all kind of like critical of the way language is evolving, the way it's changing, the way people use it now? I'm sorry to say that I am, and I worry sometimes that all the choices that we have at our fingertips linguistically are shrinking. Uh, we use one collective noun now for everything. One word instead of a, a galaxy of beautiful words. Although there are new words appearing all the time. I know there are. <laughs> I mean, do you like the new, do you like text words, for example? Do no. You, ever use, you don't I'm like that. sorry, I don't. Have you never typed, I am lolling? No. No? <laughs> have you ever... I had to ask somebody what lol meant. Have you ever waffled? No. Do you know what waffling is? No, I don't. <laughs> but how do you know? You haven't done it. Well, that's true. But well, that's the weird thing, those acronyms have become words in themselves now. Yeah, they but have. But that's the way language has always evolved. Sure, sure. I have here... A short extract from one of the most famous speeches from Shakespeare, from Richard III. Now is the winter, bloody bloody blah. Yes. And I have a modern version, written by the kids, which is on the street. Is it all right if I stick my finger? No, I'm going to ask you to read that, and then I'm going to ask oh. you to try and and try and enter oh. into this one with the same amount of gusto and see if you like the I'll new try. rhythms. M may, may I try this? Please do. <clears throat> so Ben Kingsley. <laughs> Richard III. What happened? That... <laughs> Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows 
bound up with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments. That's what I Beautiful. 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 If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, go and see that play. Okay, now this is a modern version. Same sentiment, slightly with new words. See if you can get your tongue around these new words. Same, same speech. New whiteners. No, my father throws it on thanks to our man, man King Edward the Fourth. All them bad things that were going on with your family have vanished and turned pung. Now we're just reaching our heads. I think I prefer that. I don't think you gave that a chance. I did. I didn't give that a chance. I gave it my best shot. You didn't, because this is now all of my fam's bear troubles are done, thanks to my man, then King Edward the Fourth. In it, all them bad things that were going to murk the York family have vanished and turned pens. You're at home with this. Now we dance the weaves of victory on our heads. <laughs> See? It's equally valid. You, you ruined my speech. Oh. <laughs> now you did it beautifully. Um, I didn't realise that you had, early in your career, you had performed in musicals as well, and you sung on stage, and you have composed as well for musicals. I didn't yeah, know about this true. side of you at all. Do you, yeah. do you still do that? Do you still dabble in music? Do you still no, compose I, or I, sing? No, I think I use, I use my musical ear to, get, to ca try and catch the rhythm of a character, but I don't often publicly sing anymore. And yet the musical you years ago, uh, I believe it was called, Sm is it Smashing Time or Smashing, Smashing Day? Day? Smashing Day. Smashing Day. And this was oh, in the yeah. late 60s? Yes. And yes. Brian Epstein was involved yes. in producing. Yeah. And didn't the Beatles, they, they saw potential? They, they had a word with me after the show. They said, you know, you, you ought to meet our recording manager and, and, and have a go, give it a go. And I did. I met this terrifying man behind this massive desk and clouds of cigar smoke who said, I want to mould you. I'm going to mould you into a star, <laughs> a rock star. And I, I, I ran out of the room, <laughs> terrified, and became an actor instead. Do you ever regret that, though? No, I don't. I don't regret it. Because no. I think I've, I've sort of melded the two in a crude kind of way. But you can sing, and huh? I was wondering whether we're going to take a break now, whether I could use the time of the break to persuade you to maybe give us a song here. Because I think that would be quite an experience. So I'm going to leave that hanging. Let you think about that, and when we come back, we may have Sir Ben Kingsley singing for you as well. Don't go away. Join me after the break. Sir Ben Kingsley will still be here. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the show. Sir Ben Kingsley is still sitting right here. Uh, let's talk about your next movie, because the big movie that Ben is going to be in coming up, uh, it's about three weeks' time, is Iron Man 3. OK? I've been looking forward to this. And uh, he plays the big villain. Iron Man has a big villain. You'll play the Mandarin. But he isn't, he isn't a Chinese character. In the comic books, he was Chinese. You guys haven't gone with him as a Chinese person, have you? No. He, he uses Oriental uh, iconography and Western iconography. His costume and his voice is very hard to pin down and determine. His voice is American, but it's, that's particularly disconcerting for, for the audience he's attacking because they hear a homegrown voice. Um, but using language and words that are utterly alien to their culture and, their, and to their uh, belief system. So it's a clever device, but he's not Chinese, no, and I will not do my Chinese accent because he's very bad. No? Okay. <laughs> well, all of your accents tonight have been terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who do you base him on, though? Is there someone that you can base, if you're playing a character as unusual as that, and you're playing yeah. someone, obviously, who, who needs to be grounded in some sort of reality? I think I, I, the reality I grounded him in was his sense of righteousness. What, what we don't realize about the enemy sometimes is that they, they feel a sense of rightness and righteousness. Every, every gesture they make, everything they do and say is imbued with this calm, still righteousness uh, which will allow them to strap bombs to themselves, to, to go into public buildings uh, and detonate a vehicle, uh, to manufacture... Uh, improvised uh, explosive devices um, they, and they do it with a sen an unswerving sense of right uh, as if they've had some operation that removes something from the brain that questions things and it's that that I that I hung on to as the Mandarin. And his rings. He has ten rings. He has these power rings, doesn't he? But that's what's interesting about him, uh, what you've just said there, of course, because I think in fiction, certainly, the, the most interesting villainous characters are those who don't believe they're doing something wrong. Totally believe that, that what they're, they're setting the world to rights. They're creating a universe around them in which they can function. And it's often chaotic. 
Yeah. Well, let's have a look. This is you haven't seen this film yet, have you? No. Okay. Uh, and will you be go, you'll be going to the premiere, I guess. I will. Yes. Okay. Are you going? I am now. Oh. Um, <laughs> okay. okay. And I think Ben's inviting everyone here this evening. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Okay. Let's have a look at a clip. I'm so excited about this. I love, I love the Marvel comics anyway, but I, I, I love the Iron Man films in particular. This is out on the 26th of April. Let's have a look. Well then, what are we waiting for? Mr. President, only two lessons remain. And I intend to finish this before Christmas morning. Meet Thomas Richards. Good, strong name, good, strong job. Thomas here is an accountant for the Roxon Oil Corporation. And I'm sure he's a really good guy. I'm gonna shoot him in the head. Live on your television in 30 seconds. Wow. Iron Man 3, April the 26th. There'll probably be snow on the ground, but it'll be a great night out. Okay, early one we mentioned that uh, Sir Ben might sing a little bit for us, and you've agreed. You've agreed to oh, give us uh, a little burst I... or something. Oh, all right. Whether you like it or not, you've agreed. Well, only if I may please mm -hmm. sing it for and about and to my wife, who's not here but we're watching, and dedicated to my four kids, Thomas, Jasmine, Edmund and Ferdinand. Well, would that be okay? That would be okay, but I now feel that would be lovely. I'm now feeling that when you go back home, you're going to be facing a very pissed off gardener. That's all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't even get a name check. I'm sorry. He's You've... got to toughen up. Okay, what, what song have we arranged for you to sing? What song have we got lined well, up upstairs? Well, um, my son Edmund was, was married recently and I've acquired the most wonderful daughter-in-law. And part of their wedding service was this song that Louis Armstrong made famous called It's a Wonderful World. And we all One sang it together songs. at the wedding. And I'd like, that's why I want to sing it, uh, as, uh, to bless them in their new marriage. Well, that's a treat for us as well. But what a lovely <laughs> sentiment. Will you join me in saying thank you to just a splendid man to spend some time with, Sir Ben Kingsley, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> OK, so, I'm going to give you this. Oh, oh, my my God. God. It's really going to happen. It's really, really going to happen. It's really going to happen. It's happening now, whether you like it or not. Yeah. It's a lovely thing. Yeah. OK, so, when you're ready, yeah. let's bring the music in. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom. For me and for you And I think to myself What a wonderful world I see skies of blue Clouds of white Bright shiny days Dark sacred nights and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful Beautiful. Sir Ben Kingsley, thank you so much. Join me after the break, Barbie Chapman too, one of the most beautiful movie stars in the world. Audrey Coutu, don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. OK, let's get my next guest out. She became a worldwide star after her performance in the magical Amelie. In case you didn't see it, let me show you how wonderful it was. Parfois, le vendredi soir, Amélie va au cinéma. J'aime bien me retourner dans le noir et contempler le visage des autres spectateurs. Au premier qui arrive au bout d'un passerelle. Puis j'aime bien repérer le petit détail que personne ne verra jamais. Par contre, j'aime pas dans les vieux films américains quand les conducteurs regardent pas la route. A wonderful film made magical by an incandescent performance from the magnificent Audrey Totu. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Merci. 
Uh, should I say as? How do I say the familiar form? Asseyez vous or assis tu? Assis toi. Assis toi. Yes. Okay. So. Wow. Don't worry, we're not going to do the whole thing in French. <laughs> oh, unfortunately. Well, I don't. Don't, you're... don't forget I'm French, so I may not understand your super English accent, as you may not understand my super French accent. So, you know, don't be upset if I don't laugh if you make a joke. <laughs> it won't be the first time that's happened. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, that's very kind of you, though, to warn us. Okay. Uh, can I just check I am pronouncing your name correctly? It is Audrey Totu, not Tatu. No, Totu. Totu, because I have always been saying Audrey Tatu. Yeah, everybody's saying that. Okay. You know, but now we know it's Totu. Yeah. Do you have a tattoo? I don't. I don't. But now I know if I wanted a tattoo of Totu, I would say, can I have a tattoo of Totu to go with my tattoo of Desmond Tutu? And that would be... You, you, you know, it seems hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be, so really... I'm going to laugh and smile and, you know, that's the only thing I can do, you know. That makes you our dream woman right there. Yeah. I got okay. that one. Okay. Um, what an incredible career you've had. Amelie, uh, when I saw Amelie, like so many people, I fell in love with the film, I fell in love with the character and I fell in love with you a little bit as well. Uh, you know, I think people did and, and I think people... Often they, they, they kind of thought you were Amelie for a while, didn't they? Did you, did you have to deal with that? Were people expecting you to be more like her when they met you? No, I never felt that. Oh, okay. No, they immediately noticed that I was uh, kind of far away from her. Did you like the character, though? Do you like her, or did you find her kind of too innocent, too kind of... Uh, no, I really like her, because she's a, a pure heart, and that was a little miracle for me to, yeah. you know, to play this, this part. Amelie was a huge hit, but The Da Vinci Code, mm -hmm. an enormous international hit, and Audrey Tattoo, I'm sure you saw her in that as well. Fabulous performance for you, and holding your own against Tom Hanks. That must have been then, now knowing that you are somewhat insecure about your English, quite a challenge, quite an experience for you. Well, it was very, I was very, very impressed first when I met him. So I was like a teenager when she meets her idols, I was like... <laughs> You know, trying to hide myself to, you know, no, I was a really idiot. Like, uh, it took me, I don't know, maybe 10 days to realize that I was not like a, a special effect that they had put me be, you know, beside him. <laughs> you know, there was something like that. So that you were really there? Yes. Let me ask you about the new movie, because this is, uh, it's a very different film to the two we've discussed previously so far. Uh, and I want to get the title right, because I'm going to mispronounce it probably, but Therese Descaru. And this is the, the, the woman's name, the legal yes. Tell us about the film. Tell us about the character you play. Tell us about Therese. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, not a romantic comedy. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a story of a woman who are stuck or, you know, blocked. Stuck in a relationship? Stuck in, yeah. a, in a wedding which uh, make her very unhappy. And she going to dive into the crime, trying to poison her husband to escape. So she's that, and this is set in the past, of course, when it would be much harder yes. for a woman... Of course, of course. ...to get out of that situation. Yes. What, what period is it set in? What, what year was it? Yes, it's around... Uh, it's the beginning of the 19th century, around okay. 1920. So the, yeah, so the 20s there. Well, I, uh, you perhaps know this. I'm a big film fan. I adore French film cinema. So I was thrilled I to see uh, this film coming my way. Here is a clip of... And let me get the name right again. Thérèse Descaru. Ok, not bad. Pas mal. Je crois que ma mère avait raison, c'est l'incendie de Mado qui m'affiche plus rien. Oui mmh. oh. oh, zut, j'ai oublié mes gouttes. Je vais te les préparer. Voilà, je vais le faire. Alors, un, deux, trois, quatre. Ah oui, je compte mes J'ai demandé à Ballon de te faire ton omelette. Absolument. It's a master class in screen acting right there, mm -hmm. all in the faces. The film's out now, go and see it. Um, uh, you, you live in, do you live in Paris? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, but you weren't born in Paris, were you? No, 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 I'm born right in the middle of France. So whereabouts in France? Where were you born? Montluçon. Okay, and uh, were you, as a child, um, were you as excited about going to Paris as someone from Inglewood? Because the first time I went to France, I couldn't believe it. I was so thrilled to see the Eiffel Tower, to see yeah. French comic books. Was that something you grew up wanting to visit as well? Yeah, when I was a child, I was, I was completely um, fascinated by the Eiffel Tower. So my parents took me there. And the first time I went really to Paris to do a theatre course during the 
the, the holidays. I was, uh, I, I really thought that Paris was the place where all the most beautiful women who had uh, to go there, that was the meeting, the meeting place of, and I was like so surprised to see so many beautiful women, eh, you know, everywhere around me. And after two weeks, I realized that my apartment was like 50 meters from the elite agency model. <laughs> you know? But as a countryside young girl, young woman, I was like, wow, Paris, it's really like the, I understand why it's the greatest capital in, you know. You, do you have the address of that apartment you hired? Just <laughs> But that must be lovely. I mean, and when you first came, how old were you when you first came to uh, to Britain? The first one, the first time. Well, I came uh, with a school. Uh, you know, we, when I was at school, yeah. we had uh, we spent like one week in a family. And so you were an exchange student. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Who, yeah. What, what was the family like you stayed with? Did you enjoy that? Yes, I. En well, I think I. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed it. But I remember the first time they 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 propose us for the breakfast those beans like baked, in, baked, baked beans. beans yeah baked beans and we were just terrified <laughs> 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 it was like you know really yeah. something weird yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and after you'd eaten them i think i didn't dare you know you didn't dare. <laughs> like, or like so you no. went so you were hungry for a while yeah but look <laughs> uh, well, I hope you've overcome your fear of the baked beans. I love it now. Of course. Well, it's not a love. No. Just think of all those missed opportunities. No, I didn't get that one, but it... <laughs> <laughs> I tried. You see my brain? Well, you know, I, I, I do the, 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 the sentence in reverse, like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> where was... Well, you know what, it's a shame to see you working that hard because you really didn't miss much either, to be <laughs> Okay, how lovely to have you here. Uh, so, Therese Descaro opens on June the 7th. Please go and see it because you'll uh, be treated to another spectacular screen performance from one of the finest actresses working in film today, the gorgeous Aubrey Tautou, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Don't go away. After the break, I will be joined by world champion boxer Carl Fox and we'll have music from the fantastic Alt J. So, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Before my next guest comes out, can I just say congratulations to Her Majesty the Queen because she won a BAFTA. Did you see that in the news this week? She was given a BAFTA. There's Kenneth Branagh presenting her with the award for her support and the world family support of the British film industry over the years. He also he said she was getting for, among other things, her role as a Bond girl <laughs> in the Olympics. And I was at the ceremony, okay? I was invited along. I was very lucky to be invited along. Uh, and I was interviewed on TV beforehand with a rather unfortunate caption. Okay, look at this. That's what they put on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's out. <laughs> uh, let's get my next guest out. He is the reigning IBF super middleweight champion, and this is how he won his belt. In Britain, it's Carl Fox, ladies and gentlemen. Going up, I'll bring you back. Come on. Wow. Look at that. Wow, that's heavy. That's heavy. Is that the right way up? That's the, that, is that the, is, that's the right way up with that's the eagle right. looking down. That's it, that's it. Okay, look at that. And so this is the IBF, the International Boxing Federation World Champion Belt. Correct. And it's got mirrors on for your makeup and reversing. <laughs> <laughs> they're mirrors. What's it got mirrors on there for? I don't know why they're there. I think it's about getting them. Um, wow. can touch it. Hang on a minute. I don't think that would go round me, but thank you so much for the <laughs> gift. Yeah, no problem. That's, a, that's awesome. Hold on to that. That weighs a lot. When do you wear? You don't wear it out, ever, do you? It's just for, <laughs> could you wear it out? Could you wear it out to a, a pub or something? Or? 
No, no, no. Can you imagine? You wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, Carl, it's great to have you here. Mm -hmm. Carl, as I said, he's the IBF super middleweight champion. He's got a big fight coming up. The fight is 25th of May, is that why? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's sold out. It's at the O2 Arena here. It's going to be on Sky Box Office HD. Yes. Uh, do you get nervous? I mean, seven weeks away. Uh, obviously, you're focusing on it now, but does the, the fear begin to creep in, or are you...? I, I really switch on... Um, on the night of the fight, actually, when I get to the arena, that's when I switch into um, actually like right and fighting. But yeah, I get nervous, I get apprehensive um, on the build up, and there's um, you know there's a lot of media obligations as well. I've, I've got to promote this fight. So well, that's kind of why you're here, I guess. It's on yeah, Sky yeah. Sports box office, and it, it can get a bit annoying doing stuff when you're trying to train. Okay. You know, I've had to come down the M1 today. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 thanks for being so generous with your time. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's so you an get, honor so to you be get, on here. I can understand you, you would get tetchy, I guess. You can get... Oh, definitely, be... definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm watching what I eat. Um, I, I'm having to cut out a lot of my favourite foods. So to already that would make me tetchy. Exactly, exactly. I'm... What about others? So presumably, this is the question boxers always get asked, but presumably you give up certain uh, delights, marital pleasures? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, definitely. I mean, um, abstaining is, is something that Mickey taught in the films, Rocky. You know, women weak in legs. That's what Mickey said to Rocky, and he was he was he was right. Oh, is that who trained you, the guy from the Rocky film? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, you have an actual trainer in real uh, life. Yeah. You don't just watch the Rocky movies and chase chickens around here, because I don't it's know. Quite, it's quite realistic. The Rocky films. <laughs> Robert McCracken, MBE. He trains me. He trains oh, right. all the Olympians as well. So, so you know, you've got a proper trainer. I've got a proper trainer. Okay. Yeah. I touched Carl's stomach accidentally earlier on. <laughs> it was because I stood quite close to him, and my stomach just did it on its own accord. <laughs> So I'm not aware of my dimensions as much as he is. He was very polite about it, but I felt it was, it's like a rock down there. Yeah, I'm in training. I've probably had a couple of months already training quite hard, so I'm in quite good shape at the minute. But I don't go out of shape between, between fights like well, a lot I know, of people well, I've do. I've interviewed uh, Ricky Hatton a few times, and he tends to kind of like go crazy after a fight, and relax, and eats what he wants and drinks what he wants, and he, mm. and he gets, we can see him there. He enjoys life to the full, <laughs> and good luck to him. And then he has to get back in shape, but you don't do that. You kind of hit the gym fairly soon after a fight, is that why? Yeah, I, I keep myself in good shape. Genetically, I've, I've, I've been criticised for saying I'm genetically gifted, but I've got Polish grandparents, and I do my weight very, very easily. I've got aunties and uncles. So you said, so your, your, your grandparents, they, I'm assuming they weren't boxers? No. Uh, <laughs> but they might have been. Uh, but they were always trim then, they were always in pretty yes, good shape. So they didn't go, to, they didn't yeah, run the fat. Yeah, that must, that's out of the family, you know, where my name comes from, Froch. It's, it's um, Polish, and my three aunties and my uncle, they're all very tall and slim and lean. And, and what about I, the I other side of the helped. family? Were they... The other side of the family is not too bad, quite strong. I think I get my strength from my um, from my mum's side, to be right. honest. Wow. And fighting spirit from my mum. She's a bit of a fighter. So your dad, you got the physique, and from your mother, mm. you got the aggression. Yeah, but she's she's <laughs> she was born in Newcastle. She's she's a, she's a northern, so. I don't want to generalise, but okay. she yeah, she can have a go. <laughs> While we mention your mum, uh, does she come to see you fight? Does she watch you fight, or can she not bear to? She's my biggest fan. She comes to every single one of my boxing matches, amateur and professional. She's not missed a fight all over the world, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have it any other way. She's, she's brilliant, my mum. I can imagine that would be a lovely thing <laughs> is, uh, for you to know she's there. Yeah. So, does your, are you married? I live with my partner, You live Rachel. with your partner, OK. Yeah. So, does she come to the fights as well? She comes to all my fights, okay. yes. And, and she doesn't Since we've get been in, together. Does been she together. get into it? Does she kind of like... She can be very vocal, yeah. She gets... Um, she gets to this year's there with my son. That's my baby boy, Rocker. What a lovely He's... little fellow. <laughs> Thank you. So, when I, when I boxed Mikel Kessler for the first time, actually, Rachel was sat at ringside about to burst. I mean, that was April 2010. I think about to it burst was... isn't the most flattering <laughs> phase you can yes, find a pregnant Sorry one. about that. Yeah. Uh, so she was ready to have the baby then. So she she's... Was... And now there's another one with the same and, fight, the rematch. And, and then our baby girl's due at the beginning, obviously, four weeks before the fight. So hopefully everything going well, I can be relaxed and just concentrate on the last four weeks. So, you know, the, the baby's safe at home and mum's exactly, doing well exactly. as well. That would be yeah. lovely. Now, this fight with uh, Mr. Kessler, who's coming up here, Mr. Kessler beat you the last time mm. you fought. Yes. OK, it was on points. Very course, close, close fight. Close, a lot of people thought it could have gone either way, but I boxed him in his, his home country of Denmark. So you're so saying it was fixed? I lost fair and square. 
I lost fair and square. When you, uh, when you go in for the weigh-in before the fight, I've mm. noticed this, and it's almost always because, of course, it's a, it's a kind of a, it's a necessary part of the theatre that builds up to the fight for the audience. But it's also, I guess, there's a kind of certain uh, requirements uh, to make sure that you are the correct weight, that you haven't gone overweight, that you're, you're in the right frame of mind, I guess. Um, and and you often, you spend quite a lot of time with the guy you're about to try and pummel. Yes, you do. Previous to the fight, you know, uh, and, and you often get involved in these staring matches, don't you? Yeah. This is, uh, has become almost an unofficial tradition, hasn't it, where you stare at these guys and I mean, there you look like you're going to kiss each other, I'll be honest with you, that, yeah, that yeah. looks like a gay calendar I had years ago. <laughs> it's a very beautiful, well, I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, the stare out's predominantly for, for the press, to get the good pictures of the two fighters that are fighting each other. If we were psyching each other out, <laughs> yes. I believe I could outstare you. I don't think I could necessarily outbox you. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna... <laughs> so you're in the ring. How close do you get? Do you? Who determines how close they are? Does someone just come up real close? Well, the boom like that, or you? <laughs> he's a, he's a... Well, basically, that... the press, the press will say, look pose at the up. camera, hold your belt, and you pose up, you pose up to the camera. But once you've done the weigh in. They want a picture of us two. So this is each other, not so a, this, this is, is not a requirement from the boxing organisation. This is just no, no, for the media. This is really for the media because we're about the same height, about the same weight. So we are kind <laughs> of. <laughs> <laughs> After the um, that is to keep me safe. <laughs> <laughs> After the weigh-in, after the weigh-in, you're looking at your opponent. You're waiting to see the reaction from the press, and they're they're, they're going to give their orders, and they're going to say, right, yeah. can can you have your face off? But when I have the face off, yes. I'm I'm looking at my opponent. I'm looking into his eyes, and I'll be thinking to myself, right, I'm fighting you tomorrow. Well, you look angrier now than you did a minute ago, I'll be honest. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll probably and I want to reassure you, this is not going to lead to a fight <laughs> in the next <laughs> couple of days. You've okay? calmed me down. So, so I want you but to no, remember I'm... this isn't real. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself... <laughs> that speed, you didn't even see that. I'm thinking, to... <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I'm fighting you tomorrow. I'm fighting you. Okay. This ain't, no, 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 Carl, this ain't going well, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me in the room here, because I'm psyching you out now. That was my technique, you see. That was a good one. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see? Does that happen ever? <laughs> do they ever, they ever go for the gonads? <laughs> I'm looking into your eyes. We're just about to look. Yes. The press okay. are waiting. We're having a stare out, basically. I'm going to be looking to you, and I'm looking at you, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm fighting you tomorrow. I'm going to be looking to do you some damage. I'm going to look to knock you out. I'm looking to do some serious damage. So, so you want to talk now because you're probably, maybe, maybe not nervous. I'm going to suggest tennis. But um, <laughs> when I'm looking at you, I'm looking for you to swallow. I'm looking for you to twitch. I'm maybe looking for you to look away first. I'm looking at anything that makes me feel that I've got the edge mentally. So I and, want to uh, try and get the edge with you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you just cracked him, you just lost. I just, I just, I just, I just won that fight. You just totally won the little... <laughs> see, you see? You've got to watch out for that. OK, go to the side. OK, but I can see... OK, let's do this for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. OK, I'll wear contact lenses, so it's hard for me not to blink. OK. You're allowed to blink. You're allowed OK, OK, all right, here we go. Carl Fox, ladies and gentlemen, sit down. Let's chat a little bit more. I want to chat a bit more. Mm -hmm. I think, um... Ah, oh, what's that, though? You can have that as a souvenir. Put that, put that in you. your belt next time you go out there. Uh, mm -hmm. We mentioned your age earlier. You've got a few years left in if you want it, but what's your plan? When, when do you think you might retire? When do you have... Uh, and, what, and what do you have planned for afterwards? I think two or three more fights, because I'm, I'm very much at the top of my game now. And um, very, very few boxers can, can say they've, they've done well enough to retire. This is why, for me, I'm, people say, why are you still fighting? I'm still fighting now for my legacy. You know, I've, I've boxed the best of the best, and I'm not unbeaten. I won't retire undefeated. But one of the guys to beat me is Mikel Kessler, and this is the guy that's in my next fight. And I so badly want to beat this guy. It's not about the belts. I shouldn't say that. It's not about the world title belt. Forget it. Take it away. It's give, it, not, give it to me. It's not about the payday. You take it with you. It's yeah. not about the payday at all. It's about, it's about pride and honour. You know, I'm a warrior, and I want to beat this guy. And I've got to beat him. It's as simple as that. There you go. So you I'm going to be there. I'm going to be ringside. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And you're from Nottingham. I'm going to wear a Robin Hood's green helmet thing <laughs> to cheer you on. I'm going to try and get some blood on you. I'm going to hit him. <laughs> and spray it your way. No, but 
Yeah, but it's one of the worst... You can take that with one you. One of the worst promises shouldn't. anyone has given me. <laughs> on a night out, I would try, come on out, I'll get some blood on you. No! <laughs> Not in a bad way. Well, there's no good way. No, 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 no. that'll be like that'll be like a little trophy for the no, evening. No, no, I'm fine. <laughs> you know what? I'll buy a program, okay? I'm fine. <laughs> uh, I wish you the very best of luck. But ladies and gentlemen, join me in saying congratulations to a British world champion, Carl Fox. Thank right you. Thank you. Great stuff, Carl. Thanks to all my guests tonight. We'll be back next week, but now performing something good from their award-winning album, Awesome Wave. One of the best bands on the planet. It's all J. <laughs> Stephen Mulhern and Mr Chips return to our telly with a brand new series of catchphrase. Say what you see tomorrow night at 6.45. And then proof, if proof was ever needed, that you're never too old to have a laugh off their rockers. It's